the story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. NBC brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to Homicide Bureau. A police officer has been shot, mortally wounded. One of the suspects has been apprehended. The other is still at large. Your job, find him. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime, investigated and solved by the men who unrelentingly stand watch on the security of your home, your family, and your life. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Thursday, November 16th. It was foggy in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Ed Backstrand, two detectives. My name's Friday. It was 11.58 a.m. when we got to the Georgia Street Receiving Hospital, second floor, room five. Treatment room. Oh, you made good time. How's Ben, Miss Dunn? Got to the lungs, Ben, three times. He's going fast. His wife with him? They're bringing him down now. Can we talk to him? We'll make it fast. Come on, Joe. Yeah. This way. Easy. John. John, it's Friday and Romero. They want to talk to you a minute. No. Doc. Doc, it burns. My chest. Burning up. Nurse. Yes, doctor. Are the hypodermic? Oh. Yes, doctor. <laughs> Joe Friday, can you tell us how it happened? Joe. Joe. How did it happen, boy? Can you tell me? <clears throat> Can't figure it, Joe. Why'd he do it? We gotta find out. Now, how'd it happen? I don't know. I was directing traffic. East Broadway and First Street. Gray Coop. Pulled up for the stop. Gray Coop. How many men in the car? How many, John? Two. <coughs> Gray Coop. Pulled up for the stop. In the pedestrian, pedestrian lane. Went over. Gonna ask him to back up. Back up out of lane. Just gonna ask him. Yeah, John, and then what? Driver. Dark hair, eyes. Dark. Went over. Gonna, gonna ask him to back up. Pointed a gun. No reason. Pointed a gun at me. All right, easy, John. Take it easy. No reason, Joe. No reason he fired. Hurry it up, Joe. Yeah. No. What about the other man in the car? Did you see him? Can you describe him? Joe. Joe, did you get him? Great coop driver. Guy with him. We got the driver, John. He's upstairs. The other one got away. We got to find him. You got to help us. My wife. Somebody sent for Dora. She's on her way. She'll be here in a minute. Now, can you tell us? The other man in the car, what did he look like? Great coop. What did he look like? Don't press him, Joe. Great coop. The driver. Quiet a gun. Dark hair. Yeah, Dark I know the other man, John. We got the driver. What did the other man look like? Send for... Dora. Come on, Ben. Thanks, Doc. Okay. I'm going, Fred. Yeah. John got any kids? Two. Always pick a family man. This thing's got a phony ring to it, Ben. You don't just pull a gun and shoot a man. Not if you're sane, you don't. Here's the stairs. The guy we got is as sane as they come. And how do we explain it? All I know is that hood shot John Bemis, and I want to know why. Mm. Might be a lead in that car he was driving. Maybe. Come on, here we are. Phone message for you, Friday. Came in a few moments ago. Thanks, Davis. From R and I. They gotta make. Take a look. No make or warrants on James Vickers, Gray. Let's talk to him. Come on. Yeah. Minor wound, Joe. Bullet penetrated the fleshy part of his hand. Didn't touch the bone. Thought this guy had an arm wound, too. Just a neck, man. That officer you shot, Vickers, he's dying. Is he? He's a family guy. Got a wife, two kids. Has he? Why did you shoot him, Vickers? Ask him. We did. Then you know the reason. Said there wasn't any reason. That's right. Look, we're going to make you on this, Vickers. You know that, don't you? I don't know anything. Why'd you shoot him? Shut up. Why'd you shoot him? Joe. Yeah. Davis? Yeah? Stay with him. Bye. Doc, get us an MT slip on this guy, will you? We'll be back in a minute. Come on, man. All right, Joe. Have it ready. Too big, punk. 
Easy, Joe. Oh, easy nothing. I've seen too many good cops like Bemis cut down by punks like that Vickers. Getting mad won't help. Come on, down the stairs. Yeah. Back to see Bemis? Why? Just for the record. I want to see if the doc thinks it's okay for us to bring Vickers down. I'd like to have Bemis definitely identify him as the guy who shot him. We've got three good witnesses. An identification for Bemis will clinch it. I want to see Vickers get everything he's earned when he goes to court. Here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Fast, Joe. Yeah. Not his wife? No. Did he make it in time? No. Did he say anything that it help? No, it might. He said a prayer. City Hall. Two six two five. Two six two five. Auto records, Crowley. Joe Friday, Vince. What about a make on that car used in the Bemis shooting this morning? Yeah, Joe. I've been trying to get a hold of you. Where are you now? Georgia Street, second floor. What about the make? Car was reported stolen yesterday afternoon. Registered to Harold Simpers, 716 Everett Street. Report said the car was taken from a parking lot at Grand and Wabash. Okay, Vince. Thanks. What about the guns they found in the car? Lee Jones still had them over at the crime lab. He's running them through. No words yet? No. You make out the impound report on the car, Joe? Yeah, recovery report, too. They're still dusting for print. MT slip ready, Doc? Yeah, right here, Ben. Medical card, history, MT slip. You ready, Vickers? Yeah. All right, put out your wrist. Put the cuffs on him, Ben. Watch his hands. You saving me for the hot lights? All right, let's go. I'm not going to jail. You're in jail now. Looks like a hospital. Bars on the windows, aren't they? All right, come on. Give me a smoke. Here. Okay. Light. What do I get if I open up? No deal. My talk, make it attractive. Who was the other guy in the car? Hitchhike. I always give rides. Then why'd he run when we chased you? Maybe he was scared. You're part of a gang. Maybe. Who was the other guy? What's it worth? Oh, come on, Vickers. You're wasting our time. Where are we going? All right. My hand hurts. I want to call my own doctor. You hear me? Yes. That cop pulled his gun first. I can prove it. Yeah, down the stairs. Easy, huh? Where are we going? I said, where are we going? All right, what's it worth if I talk? I could tell you all about it. Let's make a deal. You'll tell us anyhow. Think so? All right, you, out the door. Uh, wait a minute, huh? Cigarettes out. All right, Ben, light it. Yeah. Nice of you guys. Thanks. <laughs> oh, 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 get up, Ben. Wait, Stop. Stop. He's crossing the street. Fire over his head. Watch the crowd. Vickers! Joe, he's running for that car. All right, let's hold it, Vickers. All right, stop it, Vickers. He's stopped. Come on, Joe. All right, come on. Get back, please. Let us through here. Let us through. Shall I call a doctor, Joe? No, he wouldn't be interested. The guy's dead. James Vickers, murder suspect, address unknown, died almost instantly at 1.13 p.m., November 16th, while attempting to escape. His body was taken to the county morgue where it was posted. All the personal effects found on the body were listed by the coroner and a receipt for them given to our office. At 8.35 the next morning, Ben and I met with Chief Detective Zed Backstrand. Those four guns they found in the car Vickers was driving, they're all U.S. Army property. Where were they stolen from, Skipper? I don't know. Each one of the guns is stamped U.S. Army, that's all. Well, that makes it easy. The coroner find anything on the body? Nothing to tell us why Vickers decided to kill a traffic cop. What did Bemis say before he died? He was on traffic duty yesterday morning down at East Broadway and First. At 10.35, a gray coupe pulled up for a stop sign. Vickers was driving. Yeah. Bemis started over to tell him to back up out of the pedestrian zone. Vickers pulled a gun and shot him. How'd they catch Vickers? Chased him three miles before he piled into a lumber truck. The guy with him got away. Fine. Checked R and I. No make or warrants on Vickers. Kicked back right in on his fingerprint. All right. What's your guess, Friday? I don't have one, Ed. Vickers could have been hopped up. Doc Stanley over at Georgia Street said no. He checked him. Uh, wait a minute. Backstrand. Yeah, hold on. 
Are you Friday? Sure thing. Friday talking. Yeah. Yeah, good. Be right over, Lee. We're in business, Ed. Crime Lab just found Vicar's address. There it is, Joe. Thanks, Lee. Let's see, huh? Silver Dollar Hotel. Received a Mr. James Vickers, $6.50, room 345. Where'd you find it, Ming? Under the front seat, in with the tools. Anything else? Not a thing. How about prints? Two. Kind of smudged. Hope we can run a make with them. No prints on those four guns, Lee? Smeared. Not enough to classify. Yeah, this is it, Ben. That's all we got. Come on, let's see if we can make it pay off. We located the Silver Dollar Hotel on East Grand between 16th Street and Pico. It was an old-type frame building with a brightly colored neon sign jutting out over the sidewalk just above the dark entrance. The manager's name was Luther Gage. We showed him a picture of James Vickers. He definitely identified him as one of his former tenants. He told us that Vickers had stayed at the hotel one week in room 345 and that he had checked out two days ago. Was Vickers staying here alone, Mr. Gay? Yes, alone, quiet man. Did he have any visitor? Maybe. Wouldn't know. Paid his bills. Spent most of his time away from the hotel. Good tenant. Did Vickers have any friends here in the hotel? Mm, maybe. Fell in the room next to Mr. Vickers. He still lives here. Two of them used to be kind of thick. Can we look at that room Vickers stayed in, Mr. Gage? Mm, let's see. Yes, it's still vacant. All right. This way. This man Vickers was friendly with. What's his name, Gage? Mm, Knight. Raymond Knight. Room 343. Is he in his room now? No. Went out about 8 this morning. Here's the elevator. How well would you say Knight and Vickers knew each other? Couldn't say. Good tenants, both of them. Pay their bills. Did they go out together? Seem to know each other well? Wouldn't know. I don't pry. Look, this case involves murder, Mr. Gage. We told you that. We'd appreciate your cooperation. Cooperation? Don't pay the rent, Sergeant. Third floor. This way. Here. Three, four, five. Open it up. Nothing. Yeah, oh, here it is. Looks pretty clean, Joe. All my rooms are clean. You didn't mean it that way, Mr. Gage. I wonder if you'd show us Knight's room now. That's next door, isn't it? Hmm, I don't know about this. Poking into other people's rooms, not regular. Neither's murder. Come on, let's go. Does Mr. Knight have this room to himself? Sure ask questions, don't you? No, Knight has a friend staying with him. About two weeks now. Not in much. He in now? Don't think so. Oh, I... Ben, watch it! Oh, rough, that's you! Oh, 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 oh. Bad shot, Mr. Gates, look out! Oh, oh, oh. Huh? out cold. Look what you've done to the room. I thought you said Knight wasn't in. He isn't. This is his friend. Great friends. 45 automatic in his hand. 38 snub nose in the bureau. Another 45. Look in his bag. I don't pry. He pays his bills. Good tenant. Yeah. Can I get outside on this phone? Mm, yes. All outside calls are 10 cents. Yeah. Here. Have to keep the books straight. Sure you do. Who's going to pay for the damage? Ask Mr. Knight's friend here. Well, say... Why worry? He pays his bills. Good tenant. I called Ed Backstrand, and he sent out a special detail to stake out the hotel and bring in Raymond Knight if and when he returned. Ben and I drove to the Georgia Street Receiving Hospital, where Doc Stanley patched up the cut on Ben's scalp and treated Raymond Knight's friend for simple cuts and bruises. From papers found in his wallet and in the hotel room, he was identified as Frank Gannon, 9896 Wasatch Street, Kansas City, Missouri. When we got to headquarters, we had Gannon taken to the interrogation room where we questioned him briefly. He told us that he was a self-employed watch salesman and that he was in the city on a business trip. He admitted friendship with Knight, but not with Vickers. We booked him at the county jail for assault with intent to commit murder. The three guns found in the hotel room were turned over to the crime lab. We reported back to the office. Show my head pounding like mad. That Gannon's a mean yeah, it's a nasty crack. I got some aspirin in my desk. Might help. You're off. Hi, boys. Rough day. I don't get much rough already. Message for you on the desk. Oh, I'm gonna eat. Starving. Right, Jason. What 
is, Joe. Me and Jones got a make on those prints he lifted off the car. I see. Yeah, something else from now on James Baker. Uh-huh. Wanted 10, 14, 43, desertion, U.S. Army. That could account for those stolen army guns. Yeah. What about the make on those prints Lee found? Let's take a look. Vance Taylor's good solid record. Four burglaries, two armed robberies, two assaults. Wait a minute, here's the mama sheet. Mm-hmm. All right. Born so-and-so, age 36, height and Alias John Fields, Harold Grant, Tom Bissell, Joe... Hey. Yeah, alias Raymond Knight. The other man who rode in the car with James Vickers the morning he shot down traffic officer Bemis finally had been identified. Vance Taylor, alias Raymond Knight. Well, that still didn't explain the unprovoked murder. It didn't explain the four guns found in the car or the three guns found in the hotel room. An assortment of arms like that could mean something big, but we didn't know what. Gannon's sudden willingness to shoot it out in the hotel room meant something, too, but we didn't know what. We had Gannon brought back to the interrogation room. Hi, Gannon. Have a seat. Everything all right? I'll bet you're worried. No, we're not worried, Gannon. You ought to be. Don't make me laugh. You're tied in with Raymond Knight. That's enough for us. You send me up for it. We're going to try. Big talk. How long did you know Vickers? I didn't. Oh, funny. His prints are all over one of those guns we found in your room. I'm not worrying. Then you better start, Gannon. Vickers and Knight killed him. If you run with him, your hands are dirty, too. I room with Knight, that's all. Knight didn't come back to the hotel. Where is he? We're not that close. You share your guns and your friends. That's close enough for us. I don't know Vickers. You mean you didn't know him? I said I don't know him. We got Vickers, Gannon. He's dead. Good story. Okay. Come on, Gannon. Let's get out of the morgue. Down this way, Joe. It's cold today, isn't it? Yeah, it's damp. Bad sinus weather. Mm-hmm. Now, what is all this? Never seen a corpse before? No, I, I'm not in this. Take me back. I don't want to look. You can close your eyes. Take me back. I don't want to look. Here we are, fellas. Slam 45. This way, Gannon. I, I get sick. I don't want to look. Throw back the sheet, Fred. <sighs> Take a no. good look, Gannon. No, he's Knight's friend. I'm not in it. Who is in it? I don't know. I... Take me out. I'm sick. All right, Fred. Thanks. Okay, boys. Interrogation room, Friday. Joe, on stakeout at the Silver Dollar Hotel. No sign of Raymond Knight. Keep you posted. Okay, Dave. Thanks. How long does this go on? I can call a lawyer, you know. Then you better call one right away, Gannon. They just picked up Knight at the hotel. He's incriminated you. You're a liar. Sure. Like we were about Vickers. We'll prove it to you, Gannon. The officers are on their way in now. They're going to put Knight in the next room. You can listen to him. Look, I came here to sell watches. I ain't in this. Gannon, you and Vickers and Knight were planning a job, a big one. We know that. If you want to wait till you get on the witness stand to tell your story, it's all right with us. Well, didn't take too long to break this one. Smoke, Joe? Yeah. Thanks. Gannon? Smoke? Hmm. What are you going to do? Nothing. Just kill a little time they bring in Knight. You haven't got any. I haven't unwrapped them yet, Joe. You want to check me out? Okay, open them up. Mm-hmm. Give them a good shuffle, huh? You're going to have some time on your hands, Gannon. Want to learn a new card game? No. Do it yourself. Good game for two. Better with three. So a lot of cards. Yeah. You got two decks there. First off, this game is quite a bit like gin rummy. Yeah? There are eight of every suit, four jokers. Jokers count 50 points. Mm-hmm. Red threes count 100 points each. If you get a black three, you can freeze the deck. Oh, I see. I shouldn't say deck. In this game, they call it the pack. The pack? What's the pack? Well, it's the discard pile, same as in gin. If you get a red three, you can freeze it. No, it's a black three. Well, what happens when you freeze it? Nobody can pick it up. Oh, I see. All right. Let's see a lot of dummy hand here. Fine game, Gannon. Sure you won't change your mind? He don't want to play, Joe. All right, now in two-handed, you deal out 15 cards, see? How many can play? As many as six, I think. I've only played up to four. You play partners with four? Yeah, that's right. Okay, count your cards. I gets 15. 15, 14, 15, right. Now, now what do I do? Well, I guess you better lay your hand open. That'll be the easiest way to show you. Okay. Now spread them all out over there. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you don't have a great hand there. You got a couple of black threes. You can use those. Yeah, that's fine. They count a hundred apiece. No, no, no. Those are red threes. Black threes don't count anything. Oh, red threes. That's right. Do you remember what black threes are for? Yeah, you can use them to freeze the pile. Pack. That's right. The pack. Well, you know what I mean. All right, now, look. You see, I got a joker here. Jokers are wild. Do you remember how much they count? They're wild. A hundred points. No, red threes are worth a hundred. Jokers count fifty. You don't explain it very good. I don't understand. Well, how simple can it be? Gannon's not even playing. You get it, don't you, Gannon? Okay, red threes count a hundred. Jokers count fifty. Black threes, you can fit the, you can freeze the pi- uh, the pack. Yeah, good. Now hold on to that, will you? Now black threes freeze the pack, but that's not the only card that can do it. No. No. Deuces can do the same thing. Well, you see, the only difference is if you use a deuce, which is also wild, you have to have a natural pair in order to pick up the pack. Now, with a black three, it's I knew it. good until... I knew it wouldn't work. It was sour right from the start. Baker's killed the cop. Ben, I'm not in it. I'm right, coming I'm taking no raps. Johnny, the stenographer. Right, Ben. All right, Gannon. Too late. You haven't got time. 20 after 1, they're going to do it. Do what? Payroll. Brazier Company. Messenger leaves at 120. He's got the payroll. 30 grand. They're going to get him. Where does the messenger leave? 120. You're too late. I'm not in it. Where does he leave? 120 leaves the bank, I think. No, maybe the company. Where's the company? Third and Spring. They're going to get him. Where's the bank the messenger goes to? Up the block, Second National, Third and Hill. Where are they going to get the messenger? By the alley, Clay Street. I'm not in it. Ben, check it. Get out of communications. Have him put out a call to block up the area. Give him the details. All right. Johnny. Yeah, Joe. Stay with this guy. Okay. Davis. Davis. Brazier, Brazier, Brazier Manufacturing, Olympia. Uh, uh. Good afternoon, Brazier Manufacturing Company. Give me your payroll division. There's a police department emergency. Oh, what's that, sir? Your payroll division. It's an emergency. One moment, sir. Come on, hurry up. Payroll, Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins, this is Sergeant Friday, police department. We've had a tip your payroll messenger is going to be held up today. Has he left your building yet? The messenger? Yeah. Oh, my, he left early today. Went out the door about ten minutes ago. Thanks. Second national, second national security. Second national, what's your order? Three. Friday, what's all the attention? Did you break that guy in? Wait in a minute, Ed. No time. Mm. Good afternoon, second national. Give me the manager on duty, please. Emergency. One moment, please. One moment. Come on, come on. I'm sorry, sir. The line is busy. Would you care to wait? Give me the chief teller. Thank you. Chief teller, Waters. This is Sergeant Friday, Police Department. Emergency call. Has the payroll messenger from the Brazier Company left the bank yet? Well, uh, I wouldn't know, Sergeant. Uh, just a moment. I'll have your call switched. Yeah. Operator. Beatrice, would you give this call to Miss Chalmers? Uh, it's important. Thank you, Mr. Waters. Miss Chalmers, good afternoon. Miss Chalmers. What's the matter, Friday? Are you sick? Yeah, I'm sick. Miss Chalmers, good afternoon. Miss Chalmers is a sergeant, Friday, police department. Has a payroll messenger from the Brazier Company left the bank yet? From Brazier? Why, yes, not more than two or three minutes ago. And he had the payroll with him? Of course. Thanks. Got a tip on a payroll stick, a baby. Coming? Yeah, let's go. Ben, down this way. Coming. Let's hustle it down the stairs. Communications, get the story. You got it on the air now. Where's this Brazier Company? Third and Spring, about five blocks from here. Come on, here's the garage. All right, come on, hit it. Let's make time. Get the radio on. Just warming up. All units. Attention all units. On 3rd Street, corner of Clay Alley, 211. A back messenger. Suspects are headed west on Clay Alley. Suspects are on. Code 3. 11R. Take the call. Cars are closing in fast. 4th Street up ahead, Ben. Might meet him at this end of Clay Alley. Hold on. Quiet at this end. Not much you can do with us. Hey, hey, look. Coming out of the alley now. The guy with the police. Brown coat. The guy with him. Pull up then. Let's go. All right, you two, hold it. They're running for it. Come on. Ben, what's this button? Let's go. Come on, they're losing it. I see him up ahead. They're turning on the hill street. Romero, come on. Will you, Skipper? You see him too? Heading for the subway terminal. Yeah, they're going into the crowd. Don't lose them. 
Right, I'll take the ramp to the left. Ben, go with him. I'll take the one to the right. You see him go? No, I lost. Now, wait a minute. There they are. Over the turnstile. Come on. Go. Go. They're off the platform. They're crossing the track. That's that one of them. Come on. Over the turnstile. Come on, Ben. Go the other guy. He's down into the tunnel. He's crazy. Come on, after him. Hug the side. He's trapped, Ben. There's a train coming through. You, come back. You're trapped. Ben, get out. Hug the side. You all right, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, you? Mm-hmm. You want to check? No, I don't think it's any use. Yeah. Well, let's go. I wonder why he tried so hard, Joe. I don't know, Ben. Some people are like that. You can blow the whistle all you want. They never know when to stop. The story you have just heard is true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. Frank Gannon, the only surviving member of the holdup gang, was tried and convicted of the crime of assault with intent to commit murder. He is now serving out his sentence at the state penitentiary. You have just heard the 16th in a new series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet is from the office of acting chief of police, W.A. Wharton, Los Angeles Police Department. Tonight's program is dedicated to Private Richard H. Taylor of the Washington, D.C. Police Department, who on the evening of December 13th, 1946, gave his life so that yours might be more secure. Dragnet came to you from Los Angeles.